Hi guys, my name is Christina and welcome to my channel. And in this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how I'm working and creating a cover for the chapter that I just completed, chapter 8 for my comic. And I'm just going to take this opportunity to talk to you a lot more in depth about what goes in the process of me creating my covers, how I'm thinking about them, wh what I'm trying to achieve with them, and just overall we'll talk covers and tell you a little bit about what I'm doing and what's the point and like the vision behind this particular cover. And actually going to link a video about me talking about how to create cover for your comic over here somewhere in the corner because I already talked about it and this time I was actually I would be actually showing you the example of how it's done so my vision for this particular cover and overall the covers how I've been doing for my comic so far is that I like to have cover show the main character of the story like another protagonist it's not like my story doesn't have one main character there is several protagonists and maybe not protagonists like narrators yeah because I don't I wouldn't say that my story have protagonists antagonists there's people everybody's just trying to do their thing at least I don't like seeing my characters like this so far what I've been doing with my cover with each cover I would show who is the character that will be appearing in this cover or appeared already that is a narrator that is important character and I doing it through the cover without actually pointing it out and you might for example introduce to several different characters in the chapter or the chapter previously and you don't know exactly who is important but I kind of hinted at it through the cover so I already did covers for most of the characters that you guys seen on my channel and the one that I've been talking about being protagonist and with this cover I'm actually not introducing a person I'm introducing a pigeon a pigeon on this guy's shoulder and I also don't specifically state in my comic that whoever is in the cover is a narrator is the character that is important it will come in in you know in the story I will be really important later on I'm just you know telling my story and they're just putting one character on the cover then another character on the cover and I just see, want my readers to figure out what's the logic behind of this on their own so in this particular cover it's a pigeon who is the hero of this cover even though we do have a person we do have Kuro in the cover he already was introduced he was actually introduced twice through the cover first cover of him uh, the cover for chapter two we see him from the back the chapter cover for that one is just this guy from the back we don't even see his face and this is how I wanted to show that he's a little bit mysterious and there is a character that because I also was revealing him in the chapter so and telling about him in the chapter so I wanted to have this aura of mystery a little bit about him and the first chapter that is actually from his perspective that he is on on his own and we are getting to see how he's what he's doing in his own chapter this is where we see his face on the cover and for this particular one uh, I still draw him just because I think it's gonna be like just interesting to do like I draw a person but as you can see the way I'm sketching him out here is that he's not even looking at the camera he is actually looking at the distance and he is not interested about the camera he's in his own thoughts he is listening to music in his headphones and he doesn't care but pigeon is actually turned around and looking straight at us and I wanted it to be a little bit I don't know I wanted this cover to create a little bit of an eerie feeling because throughout the story well pigeons in my story they are messengers but they are magical beings they are sentient they are able to speak they are, they have certain other magics and they seem to be you know no able to know something extra and this is something that I like about pigeons because they're a little bit mysterious and there is a question how much do they know they're also able to tell when somebody is lying or telling the truth or rather they don't hear lies they only hear truth and they're only able to speak truth and they're also able to see your thoughts and transmit thoughts so they're very magical beings and they have their own kind of logic about them and they're very unusual so this is like some part of my comic that is you know it's its own weird thing that is going on so and we're starting to get ideas about what pigeons can be and as we're learning about pigeons we're also learning about this particular pigeon and learning about his agenda or what he might be up to or what he's thinking to do and just giving the idea about pigeons being not that simple and even though they're presenting themselves like a very uh, 
benevolent beings that are just uh, don't have a will of their own and for most pigeons it is true but this particular pigeon he seemed to have certain thoughts and certain opinions and he seems to be a character that has a say in the story and we're starting to get glimpses of it in chapter 8 in this particular chapter. So I decided it will be only fitting to put this pigeon on the cover and introduce this idea to the reader to show that hey maybe this pigeon has more agency that we think and maybe this pigeon is a character which he is. This pigeon is actually very important and actually the actual title of my story is so the story is called the book of contradictions and then it has three arcs kind of like three volumes and one is called pigeon another is called zilm and another is called snow so first 25 chapters are under umbrella of the title pigeon so so and it's actually this particular pigeon that is in the title of the story so pigeons are crazy important and this particular pigeon is crazy important and this is how i'm starting to hint to at my readers that hey pay attention to this pigeon and that's i thought that's just the idea that i have for the cover is actually very fitting because i'm introducing the pigeon and the character that you assume is the main character is not even looking at the camera so i thought it is interesting twist so this is something i i don't know i think it's a good idea for this chapter however it's actually not the first idea that i had for this chapter i had different idea for this chapter but i had to scratch it out because i thought that that chapter was a little bit too telling at this point it was uh, revealing some information about this character about kuroi and i think um i decided it would it was revealing it a little bit too soon so uh at this point, introducing Pigeon. So let's talk a little bit of the drawing process. As I talk about my channel a lot, one of the ways I really like to draw if I'm drawing a standalone piece is exactly how I started drawing this particular cover where I created lines first and then I created the color with soft brush underneath. And this is the base that I like creating for something that is standalone. So something that I don't have to fit into certain consistency of colors, like it's not a panel or in the page. So if, for this particular case, this is how I like to start. And then I just go on top with the layers and start drawing everything through. And as usual i like to have my references with me at all points i like to have references for the skin for the person and the the guy reference that i'm using i actually color corrected this guy quite a lot i color corrected his eyebrows i color corrected his eyes i color corrected quite everything so he already has this color combination that i need i don't just look for the references exactly what i need i don't mind color correcting my reference and using photoshop on my reference so it fits better and then I did overall color correction of the references that I have for the guy face, for the clothes and whatnot, so they matches this new color situation of this uh, sunset vibe. As well, fun fact, uh, the sunset that I'm using is actually taken by my friend. She just saw the sunset and she sent me a picture and said that this type of sunset and this type of clouds reminds her of my drawings, reminds me of I, how I draw sky and how I draw clouds. And I thought that's very it was very nice of her to say this and also i really like this sunset so yeah definitely it looked like something that i want to draw so i immediately thought that i'm gonna be using this sunset as inspiration as a reference for my cover i already decided that i'm gonna be using it and actually it is fitting because in the chapter the chapter ends on the sunset with this character kuroi so we actually do see kuroi in the sunset lighting situation in the chapter so it works and another thing that i wanted to talk about is in my uh, covers i like to bump up a little bit the quality of what i'm drawing and bring it a little bit more to the very realistic style uh, while still being stylized in a certain way like the way my comic is stylized but i really like to take this opportunity to draw as many details as possible and this is kind of what i like doing in the covers and i'm really enjoying this and overall i'm actually stepping up the uh, quality of uh just normal pages in my chapter every time so uh, as well i'm stepping up the quality for my covers and yeah this particular uh, drawing is i just gonna be drawing through and i'm gonna pop in later on and explain a little bit about how i'm drawing the sky but for now it's just 
will be a little bit of back and forth of me putting all the layers of the darks and lights all on and making sure anatomy looks correct and I will be fiddling a little bit with this guy's face and I will change a little bit the positioning of this guy's face because I found that um, he is not like something was off like actually a good tip uh, that I would say if you are drawing a face or you're drawing something that you want to make sure you didn't draw crookedly uh, one of the ways is just mirroring your image another way that you can do is just taking a photo of your image with your cell phone the moment you put the cell phone next to your image and you see whatever you're drawing through the viewfinder like through the the phone uh, a lot of things that are raw will stand out right away. So this is something that I recommended. This is something that I've been doing with this particular cover. And I, I cannot recommend this way uh, enough. So also what I'm doing right now, I'm just filling this guy in. I, like I have a separate folder that I created and I decided to draw this guy behind this guy as well. And the reason for it being, well, first of all, I just prefer drawing background separately because I don't have to spend time going around the edges uh, because if you go in around uh, of edges of something like a background, it just takes time. And it's even when I'm drawing cover, it's always my priority to make sure I tr like I draw as fast as possible and I waste as little time as possible. So this is one reason why I'm doing that is just another not to deal with edges. I can drop background and then I can cut it out and around the character and then work with it just a little bit and make them blend well. But for you know, for the purpose of speed in this particular case, I decided as I'm sketching out the sky, I decided I'm gonna just sketch it out without the character. So I don't have to, you know, dance around edges. Plus, I already was expecting that I might free transform the character a little bit to fix anatomy and whatnot. And another reason being usually how I do in my comic when I draw covers, I have first page, like the cover page is just a standard cover. And the second page is just the background from the cover that has like quote or epigraph or just kind of fragment from this world mythos or something like this basically some information like extra information about this world some short saying or some short information that you can get and I like to use kind of like a background from the cover as a base like if you uh, go like I have links down below I'll show it to my comic if you're curious you can read it online it's free no problem and uh, if you look at it you can notice that that's exactly what I'm doing I'm just removing the character and use background as a background for this code that's why it also makes sense for me as I'm drawing the sky to fill in whatever will be behind the character at this point because I will be doing it later anyway and actually yeah I skipped a little bit I didn't record uh, like a some moment that's another thing unfortunately that happens with me if I feel a little bit insecure about my drawing like not like insecure I feel like oh, I didn't get it yet I don't like how it looks like it's wrong like when I feel the feeling like it's wrong like it's not wrong because I'm just getting there it's wrong because I didn't figure it out yet sometimes I do it off camera like fix quickly things so you see like his face is not as smoothly rendered anymore because I blocked him uh, a little bit and I turned him around a little bit before he was work uh, looking a little bit away from the camera and now he is just a straight profile and I do find that profiles personally for me for some reason nowadays this is harder to draw I don't know why I think because with the profile it's a little bit harder to understand like the shape of the face I don't know it just looks flat I don't know it's my personal weirdness but I fix his face a little bit and this is what as you can see I have a mask this is why I was m was moving around so I had already a mask around the character uh, to just cut him and put him on those uh, this background uh, but in the end the process became becomes a little bit messy as I pref would prefer to have you know processes that I'm doing for my comic and for my drawing overall to be clean art process is never clean it's can be very messy and so it's okay that's why I'm showing you everything that I'm doing here that's it for my talking segment and I think there's no reason for me to just chat through I have the whole podcast for this so I hope it makes sense what I'm guys are doing right now so I'm gonna roll the music a little bit louder and let you see how the drawing progresses and I will pop in the end of this video but for now music up and let's keep drawing
that's it for today guys thank you so much for watching i hope this video was helpful for you in a sense that now you can see how i create covers for my comic and hopefully it can help you give you some ideas of how you do it for your own projects and give you some potentially some inspiration and show you you know what you can do with the cover overall if you're interested to see me draw more i have a whole podcast i post every monday here on youtube the videos of how exactly i'm drawing whatever the hell i'm drawing the weekend before this monday and yeah you can check and see what exactly i'm drawing and my thought process because i do a voiceover on top if you guys have some specific requests of how you prefer me to do those drawing videos uh, in a sense that whichever can help you better to understand what i'm trying to teach you uh, please don't be afraid to let me know in the comments down below i will be happy to help you so thank you so much guys for watching i hope you're having a great day and i hope to see you in my next one thank you so much guys Bye.